Hi guys, Andrew here again. Today I'm going to be finishing off the Splinter Trilogy with the third book, Ensnared. Spoilers on this one, much like the last one. So to even understand the beginning of the plot of this one, you have to... I have to give away the ending of the second book. So, seriously, if you do plan to read this series, do not watch the rest of this video. Up at least until you finish the second book. Alright, so just spoiler warning again. So, the at the end of the second book, Alyssa has been locked away in a mental institution because three people have disappeared and she, she can't give a rational explanation for why. So, her father and the town believe she's lost her mind. The people who uh, it's like the people who disappeared. First off is her mom, who was dragged to back to Wonderland. And Jeb and Morpheus are also missing, though they are not in Wonderland, and the way to Wonderland is destroyed. They are caught in a place called the In Between, which is li literally what it sounds like. It's it's the place that exists between Wonderland and the human realm. So. And no one knows exactly how to do that. How to get there, how to do that, and Alyssa knows she has to go rescue everyone. But she doesn't know how to get there, but she knows someone who does. And that someone is her father, who we found out in the second book lost his memory and doesn't remember anything from before a meeting uh, Alyssa's mother. And basically it's so Alyssa knows that he knows how to get there because he was in Wonderland as well and he is the reason that Alyssa's mom did not become queen of Wonderland um, so Alyssa feeds her father a magic mushroom that shrinks him down to the size of an ant they ride together on the back of bees to the train the train of forgotten memories which will restore his memories and allows Alyssa to look upon the memories of her, the overarching villain, the one that has been threatening to kill her for the last two books, and that is the Red Queen, who has, granted, is dead, but has has to use other bodies to survive. Um, the memories that she stole from that she saw of the Red Queen, she can use to defeat the Red Queen by because her me the memories will have want to return to the body and will want to take over. It's super complicated even I'm still like trying to wrap my head around all of it, but it's it's somewhat of an interesting weapon. Weapon. Yeah. So her father regains the memories and it turns out that he is a knight charged with the protection of the two the of the in between of the, the gateways between the realms. And that he is actually a descendant, and uh, and so is all of the knights are a descendant of Lewis Carroll, who was given the task of this by the Red Queen. Again, it's super complicated, and you haven't read the other books, it makes no sense, and even then, a little, little iffy. But yeah, he takes her to the portal in between so that they can go rescue Morpheus and Jeb. And the thing about the in-between is that it's a land without magic. In, or at least not much magic because the, there is metal in the air and it keeps the people from one line being able to tap into their magic. But Alyssa is able to tap in because she is a half-blood. Half Wonderland, half human. Um, but it turns out she is not the only one. Uh, Apparently, Morpheus gave his abilities, his magic, to Jeb. So now Jeb is able to use his artistic ability, his talent, to make artwork come to life. And yeah, it's as weird and crazy as it sounds. I, I like parts of that are really interesting, parts that are really bad. But as always with this kind of power, Jeb doesn't want to give it up. Doesn't want to go back. He's wants to stay in the in-between where he thinks he belongs. And it's up to Alyssa to try to convince him to, to join them in the fight. 
and eventually it, um, they all band together to go up against the Red Queen, who is now teamed up with the Queen of the In-Between, who is the banished Queen of Hearts, who was kicked out of Wonderland for wanting to see, for basically being too crazy. That says something, if Wonderland, full of crazy people, is wants you kicked out for craziness, that says something. But basically, she wa she has a habit of taking her victims and ripping out their hearts just to watch it slash beat. Really creepy, really kind of cool. Um, so yeah, they team up together to fight them. And I'm not going to spoil the rest of the book, because the book has got a really good fight. It's really interesting. So I'm going to go on to the things that are good about this book and the things that are bad. Uh, first off, good things about this book, it is a s unlike the second book, which was a little bit of a drag, a little slower to read, this one is very fast-paced, it's a very strong get-up-and-go, and you don't have the frustration of the previous book of, we need to get to Wonderland, we need to get to Wonderland, and she never does. This one, it's like, I need to get to the in-between, and she does so fairly quickly, and it's always moving forward and moving steps upwards. Secondly, the characters are all still um, very well written, very interesting. Like I said, the Queen of Hearts is actually super interesting, as is her second, whose name escapes me, but basically he is her squire, her knight. And he has this interesting thing that he is super in love with her, in love with the Queen of Hearts, but she yet wants nothing to do with him, and he's trying to protect her, and keep her in the in-between because she kno he knows that this is where she truly belongs and that also if she goes back into Wonderland he can't be with her. He, he will lose to other suitors. Um, so it, it, yeah, it's weird. It's interesting. I really like it. They really build up certain characters to the point that it's really well written. Very good. Um, secondly, the ending the ending fight, the ending clash between the two forces is extremely well written. It's really cool. I enjoy every moment of that. And even the post amble of this is how they fix things and this and that is really well written to a point. Which leads to some of my flaws. First off, this is super love triangle written story. Which granted it's been from the beginning, but this one is just as bad. And super annoying and for part of my problem with this this thing is that again like Jeb I actually love Jeb by the end of the series which is super impressive because I hated him at the beginning of the book but I love him by the end of the book because he does things and he chooses Alyssa over himself and built, becomes a really strong well-rounded character. Morpheus on the other hand yeah I hate him. <laughs> I, I, I really, I, I'm like, there are moments of him that I like, but most of the time he is an annoying prick. <laughs> and that's like, that's his appeal! He's the bad boy! It's just like, yeah, see, no. Yeah. I, I don't mind the bad boys certain times, but the, it's like, I, usually I want the bad boy to actually be in love with the main character, and I don't ever really feel that from Morpheus. I'm like, I think he loves himself, and then he loves Wonderland second, and he clumps her in with Wonderland, kind of. But then again, he still, he loves himself most. And if they'd done something with him, like they did with Jeb, where they, Jeb, Jeb sacrifices himself and chooses her time and time again, I m might be more inclined to believe it, but I don't think, I don't feel that anything that he did in the entire series, Morpheus, I don't think anything he ever did was self-sacrificing. I think it was, I think it was a, a long con at the end of it. Just him fighting to get what he wants and then ultimately succeeding. Yeah. That, again, one of the other flaws I have with this story is that it the, is the happy ending. And I don't mean, the, I'm like, I don't mind that it has a happy ending for the most part. But everyone gets happy. It's, except some of the villains. But, you know, it's like Jeb gets a happy ending. Alyssa gets a ha get, Alyssa gets two happy endings. Morpheus gets a happy ending. It's ridiculous. And it's something they set up in the second book. 
which is like the ultimate answer to a love triangle. And it's like any series that has a love triangle, if they had any other series, if they had this, this would have been like the ultimate happy ending. This series, I'm like, I don't believe it as much, so it doesn't work. But they were like, well, it's like you, Alyssa, you will be immortal. Jeb is mortal. Morpheus is immortal. You can spend your life with Jeb, and and live. And when you are on the when he di when you are on the verge of death in the human realm, you can come back to Wonderland, and you will instantly revert to the t age that you were when you were queen. And you can spend the rest of your life with Morpheus. <laughs> again, spoilers. I just revealed the ending. <laughs> but again, this was an ending revealed in book two. And. Yeah, that's like the ultimate, like, everyone gets a happy ending thing, and it's just like, again, yeah, if I believe Morpheus deserved that ending, I could support it, but I don't think he did. He... So, for me, like, the very end of the book is just super odd and disappointing. And yeah, not disappointing, just like, I don't fully believe it because I just don't like it. I just don't like the fact that he got the happy ending and he didn't seem to change at any point in the story to get it. So there you go, that's my rant on that. I also dislike the fact that when you get to the the tail end, the epilogue, they brisk through everything. It's like, oh, they went back to Earth and I'm not and then in the author's like, I'm not gonna tell you how long Jeb lived or how many kids we had or how many grandkids. I'm just gonna say that he died and then I was about to die, and I went back to Wonderland and started my life with Morpheus. The end. It's like, like really? You're not gonna give us even a half? Like, I understand that it's somewhat a happy ending, but doesn't Jeb deserve the epilogue treatment that you give Morpheus to a certain extent? That he get, we get to see that happy ending and not just be told it. Uh, yeah, that was that was super confusing on my part, or on the the author's part anyway. Um, other weaknesses of the story. Well, the mom is kind of forgotten for a good portion of this book. Like, not until maybe almost more than halfway through is there even a mention of anything with the mom going on. She's mentioned at the very beginning of the book, and then she's never mentioned again until about halfway through. And then it's just, oh, Alyssa dreamed that she was safe and fine. You know, like, Okay, that's convenient and a little cheap, but okay. Um, <clears throat> but for the most part, there aren't too many weaknesses of the book. As I said, the weaknesses for me are the love triangle and the uh, the uber happy ending. Let's just call it that. Or Morpheus is happy ending. Um, but other stuff like the villain is really good in this book and the manipulation and the way they defeat her is amazing. The story is super crisp, super fast, super easy to read and there was no point that I felt that it was slogging or just uh, just rolling my eyes other than again love, love any kind of love triangle really came into play I did not like it. Jeb is really well written in this book. I the I really liked the way he chose they chose to do things with him to a certain extent. I think it's interesting though when you first meet him in this third book they're trying to say, oh, Morpheus always knew she was coming for him and Jeb had given up. And then you find out later, oh, that's not true. <laughs> he, he, but it's like, oh, yeah, Jeb in this book is very different and it's kind of, he's a little more aloof and pulled back and not interested, but it's it all makes sense and it all ties together very well. Um, the use of Alyssa's father in this one is fine. It's not, it's not really that important. Honestly, it, he, he gets her there. He, he takes, basically, he takes on the role that Jeb was in the first book, which is, I have to protect her. I have to protect her. And this time, it makes perfect sense because he is her father. Yeah. Some of the tying in of stuff, because they try to make the idea that the Red Queen has been a pop uh, tied into everything, that she is the entire reason that um, Alice went down to Wonderhole in the first place. She's the entire reason that the books are written. That she's the reason for it. literally everything she's planned to a T. And they even try to redeem her and give her 
realistic motivations for her stuff. And it actually works quite well, honestly. It, it, some of the tying in stuff is a little weird, but the motivations for why she's doing her thing and how she is she has lost her like it's like I said in the beginning, she she gave up her memories. And that's one of the that's the first thing that you deal with in the beginning of the book is Alyssa's trying to get wants to get her memories back to use as a weapon against the Red Queen. And the memories explain exactly why the Red Queen is doing what she's doing, but she's lost those she gave up those memories so she knows what she wants to do. She just doesn't understand the reasons. And so she doesn't have compassion or the ability to say, I'm going too far. So it's, it's really interesting. It makes the queen somewhat of a redeeming figure. And what happens to her at the end is kind of interesting. I actually did not expect that. It was really, really well written and really interesting. It was weird to see this villain character taken to such, a, such an angle. And I won't go too much into that. But yeah. Um, overall, I'd give this book 4 out of 5. No, 4.5 out of 5. It's It's got some really good strengths to it. The weaknesses are very weak. There's, um, it, it's almost perfect. So, like, it's it's a 4.5 out of 5 for me. The whole series overall, if I was to give a rating, would definitely be in that 4.5 to a 5 range. None of the books are weak enough to really pull it down. The whole series together works extremely well very well written and for the most part this author seems to have kept with the thing of this is a trilogy and is leaving it well. There's a two or three books that are just short stories but they don't they're not it's a trilogy so I do respect the author for actually saying no no it's a trilogy and I'm leaving it alone. We don't get that very often anymore especially with young adult novels of this nature so it's really nice to see no it's a trilogy and I'm not making it anymore. Um, so yeah, I highly recommend this one. I'm very happy to have read it. So I hope you all enjoy it. I'm hoping to do another one of these in the next two weeks or so. I have another series that I'm reading a book of. I'll probably just review the series and not the specific book. And I'll explain that why when the video goes up. Otherwise, uh, happy reading and I hope to see you all very shortly. Bye.